Dear students, good morning. Let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 21st April 2017. The first article is The King of Trying Times. It is related to the extradition of Vijay Malia. There are many fine points discussed by Mr. Raghavan over here on the working procedures of CBI etc. We need not get into all these things. We just have to understand the following. India and UK they have mutual legal assistance treaty. It means that criminals can be exchanged between the countries. But it is subjected to a clause of dual criminality. It means a crime which has been recognized as for the Indian laws also need to be a crime in UK. So here Mr. Vijay Malia, he has been charged with the crimes of money laundering and cheating. So obviously there is a good chance for extradition of him to India. That's what Mr. Raghavan's opinion is. And trading away our digital rights. So let's recollect our e-governance class. In e-governance, we discussed about uh, data colonialism. It means that uh, the data which has been generated from us has becoming a marketable product in the Western countries. It means they are developing certain social intelligence and a marketable product. Uh, and they are selling the product, in, uh, uh, product back to us. So I gave you the example of Siri in this context. So, our data, more than being useful to create wealth in our country, it, has, it is creating wealth somewhere else. So, that's why data is new currency, data is new wealth. So, the countries such as India, they are losing control over the data of their own citizens. This is what is the challenge. So, let me put it this way. Digital issues are also part of the trade talks under various international fora. That is WTO, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, etc. So in this context, what are the major demands of the developed countries? One thing is, the data networking shall be uninterrupted. It means that the multinational companies such as Google, Apple shall be freely allowed to extract the data, do the data mining on the citizens of the developing countries. And the next is, there are, this data sh shall be allowed to transfer between the borders. There shall not be any interruptions created in transferring this data across the borders. Third thing is, the developing countries shall not regulate any of the new products that are being developed in the future. So in a way, they are questioning the sovereign rights of the state in this context. As of now, India do not have even the data policy. Already that particular news is tightening. So that's why India need to be careful. So if these are being moved forward in WTO or RCP discussions, obviously that is a threat to data sovereignty. That is what is being discussed over here. Now Ayodhya again. So it is about the Babri Masjid demolition. There are two cases pending in Lucknow Bench and Raibareli Court. So the cases are one related to unknown Karsevaks who have demolished uh, Babri Masjid. The other is related to the BJP leaders like Advani, Murli, Manohar, Joshi and Uma Bharati who have instigated the Karsevaks. So it means these leaders are said to have provoked them and led to communal disharmony. So our judicial stagnation, administrative apathy, these have finally led to the particular situation. So, Article 142 of the Constitution provides for extraordinary powers to the Supreme Court to provide or to deliver the justice. Using this extraordinary power under 142, the Supreme Court has clearly stated that there has to be a regular sessions, regular hearing of these matters and transfer the cases to the Lucknow bench. So, now, the, the case will be or else moving forward. The next thing is, my, remember my point. Justice is a final measure of power. Remember again, justice is a final measure of power. Now, over and about this, it is also an inconvenience to the government of the day. Because Ms. Uma Bharati, who is Water Resources Minister, is also have facing the criminal charges. Mr. Kalyan Singh, who is Governor of Rajasthan, is also facing the charges. So, in this context, as governor's office provides for immunity from criminal charges, he may not be prosecuted. Uh, may not be prosecuted now. But ultimately, once he demits the office, he is expected to be. 
So in this context, as BJP has promised for probity in governance, then it is expected to cause inconvenience to the government. That is what is the article talks about. Red, blue, ordinary. India is known for its VIP culture. So remember, there is a culture of entitlement across the political and bureaucratic class in India. The culture of entitlement means we need to get this. So if you talk about Mr. Gaikwad's behavior in Air India's plane, that is a symbol or an example for this culture of entitlement. So the red beacons on the cars are symbols. Added to that, the special lanes for these people and because traffic clearances, all these have to be avoided. So there is only the one symbol has been attacked. There are many other procedures and formalities which are being taken forward and which are uh, a reason for this VIP culture, which treats a distinction between a ruler and a subject, which is a British overhang of the culture. And uh, the entire culture of entitlement has to close down in India. That's what is this article's demand is. Let's get to the open ed page. Should we privatize water? Now again, the question is about state versus market debate. Should we privatize our universities? Should we privatize healthcare delivery? Should we prioritize education? So many of the arguments will be the same over here. So that's why I take this debate as the state versus market debate. Can the state deliver the public goods better or the marketization can deliver the public goods better? So in this context, so we shall not is the first argument. Why? So water is more a right. It is not a commodity. It is more a utility which shall have universal access. Market with its urge for profitability cannot provide for the universal access and it creates the barriers based on the affordability. And second is privatization do not ensure a improved quality of the service. So if you take the power problem in Delhi, we can assume that privatization did not provide for any solution to the same. And the third thing is, the water is intricately connected to ecosystem. So just delivery of the water cannot be separated from the ecosystem. That's what has been author talks about. So the major problem today is about water management, water governance. So that's why the government has to improve the water governance rather than privatizing it. Now, the counter argument is privatization obviously provides the gains of efficiency. But efficiency at what cost is the question. And the second thing is the privatization shall be well regulated. It means that the tariffs determination shall be left to the government and only the supply chain has to be given to the private people. That's what is the second argument over here. So without regulation of the government, privatization will not be well known successful. So he suggests for a public-private partnership model. Now the third part talks about the groundwater. Now, water is already privatized in India. That's what the author talks about. So as for the English common law which the Britishers have enacted, a person who owns the land also owns the resources under the land. So it means water table under the land has become a property of him. And 80% of drinking water and other water needs are being served through the groundwater in India. So obviously water has been privatized. We all need to remember that water is a common resource pool. So this kind of private rights on the water is ultimately leading to excessive exploitation of the resource. So that's what is this article talks about. Closer to Brazil's. So this is about India-European Union relations. European Union's high representative for the foreign affairs is visiting India. So you all know that India-European Union, they have a summit level talks. The free trade talks have been continued and later discontinued. Last year when Prime Minister Modi has visited Brussels, so these summit talks have been restarted. In spite of their restart, there is no much progress because... The European Union is asking for a tariff reduction on spirits and high-end vehicles. And India is asking for a data-secured nation status from the European Union where it can export its services to the same. So this is where the trade talks have been stopped. But however there is, 
a synergy between European Union and Indian needs. What are they? The European Union's prosperity is intricately connected with the Asian security. Because Asia is a new zone of prosperity, new zone of market. So if the Europe is not well connected to this, obviously its prosperity comes into question. So that's why on sec security of Asia is very much a priority for the Europe too. And European Union is excessively dependent on China. There are more than $100 billion worth of Chinese investments in the Europe. So one way European Union, yes, the Chinese investments are providing for better relations and better prosperity. But at the same time, they come with conditionalities. So the European Union is also looking for the other way around. So in this context, India can be a better opportunity for European Union. That's what has been spoken over here. Now coming to the front page. So India makes a fresh bid to get Headley and Rana. So India, India and US have this extradition between these two countries. So in these circumstances, there is one thing called double geopardy. It means if a person is punished for the same crime in the case of United States, he cannot be extradited to India for prosecution on the same crime. Now what India did is with the Headley, it has came, with, came up with new complaints, new charge sheets which says that related to criminal breach of trust because he has visited India and submitted false documents and obtained the visa. That's why there is a criminal breach of trust. So that has become a new charges for asking Mr. Headley for extradition. That's what is this article talks about. Now, let's come for the revision page. The king of trying times. Here we need to understand about mutual legal assistance treaty and also the issue of um, double criminality or dual criminality. And then trading aware digital rights. Remember certain words over here. Digital colonialism and the digital sovereignty. Digital colonialism, digital sovereignty, social intelligence. So that big data is necessary for social intelligence and it is bringing in the questions of digital sovereignty and also data colonialism. So these are the words we need to remember. And then we need to understand the central motor vehicle rules of 1989 are been amended so that the red lights and the cars are been removed. Only three authorities are going to have now president, vice president and chief justice of India. Here the word which we have to remember is the culture of entitlement. Ayodhya again. Here remember the article 142 of the constitution which provides extraordinary powers for the Supreme Court to deliver the justice. Should we privatize water? Water is a common re pool resource. And water is an entitlement and a right to the citizens. So privatization do not offer for a improved quality the power sector has proved that. So the better model can be public-private partnership at the best, not the total privatization. And then I have discussed about uh, the uh, India-EU relations. Yes, India-EU's prosperity is intricately connected with Asian security. That is what is my point to carry home. So these are the articles for today. Thank you very much and all the best.